Let's go next one. What's the, yeah, the three? last question is, uh, and this is something that uh, Rush and Ashley started talking about this uh, last week. Uh, and I think it's a really interesting question too, because I, I struggled with this. So how should I price my coaching packet, my coaching package? Uh, yeah, I, I've talked about this a lot in different times. Um, I think, you know, what I did, uh, I started out uh, charging because I was working mostly with high school students. Well, before I was working with some adults and then high school students, um, I just charged something that I felt like would made it worth it for me to keep doing it, but also made it uh, so that price wasn't the main issue when getting started. So I think I just started charging like 50 an hour. And then I think it was a hundred an hour. And I tr I just put it into 10, uh, I gave two different options, like a 10 session option and then a 15 session option. And my very first client chose the larger of my two offerings. And I remember feeling like elation, like just it's working. like. And this was after a workshop that I gave, which was probably one of the most, if, if I could go back and, and relive like, you know, different episodes of life, that would be probably one of the, the hardest episodes to live. And it was, it just was a really bad workshop. Like it just, <laughs> uh, I, I will tell the story of it one day. Um, and I still got a client to sign up afterwards and it was a larger package. And I felt like I, it just felt this elation. Um, and it was so, it, it just made me feel like, yeah, I'm on the right track. And so I just kept it, kept it at a hundred an hour. Uh, and when a client came to me and said, I really want to work with you, but I can't afford this. Then the question is, well, what can you afford? And then we got, uh, and then it was a conversation. It was like, okay, like I can do this or, you know, and what I realized very quickly is I didn't want to, I, I knew I had needed to make money. I, I needed to be sustainable, but I didn't want cost to be a barrier. And I really wasn't a big fan of sliding scales. Like I'm not a, a fan of people saying I do sliding scales this way. I am a fan, however, of saying this is how much I charge. And I also give scholarship amounts, or if, if it's a challenge, come talk to me. Um, and a lot of the most fulfilling work I did was with different nonprofits uh, where uh, I would work and be able to donate my time in certain ways. And then the nonprofit would, we'd have some sort of reciprocal relationship where I would get some money so I could count them as hours for my certification, but it wasn't, my main thing was I just needed to get coaching hours. Mm -hmm. And so I think, if I were starting out, I would start out as low as I possibly could that would make it worth it for me. And then once I got clients, then start upping the price. Um, and that's what I did. And eventually my prices were around 210 an hour, which I realize is a lot for academic coaching, but I also was doing a lot of volunteer work. And then I also was doing some executive stuff, which I charge even more, like we're talking five to 400 an hour. So it, it can, you can, you can make money as a coach doing this. Um, it doesn't happen very quickly, but uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what I would say about it. Yeah. I, I do agree that it's a, it's not necessarily a long journey, but it's a perseverant journey. So it's not something that you're going to just graduate, get your certificate and magic is going to happen for you to be super successful. Uh, you can always try, right? But I also, I also think that I started from less to what I charge today because of my experience. And also because I, I personally, I don't know if this may happen with other coaches in training, but I struggled a lot to define um, how much I am worth to earn as a coach. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was not necessarily about uh, me feeling that I need to charge because I, I need to um, like need to be worth it uh, because of my experience as a coach. So I struggle a lot with that. And I agree with you that checking on voluntary or like chair on NGOs and, and 
uh, voluntary, how you say, charity. I don't know if it's charity, but organizations that maybe need help and start there charging a really, not necessarily significant amount, but to help people. That's also part of why we are coaching, right? Why we're doing this uh, and what's the cost of each coach to actually be here in, in, this, um, in this coaching world. Uh, I do agree with you that it's a great way to get hours. So if, if you are out there looking for ICF hours or coaching hours, uh, I would definitely encourage them to try to find uh, charities or um, organizations that may need help. And you can just negotiate with them or have a uh, contract with them. That would be awesome. Also to a spread coaching, right? Because definitely you can make a career and you can make money with this. But I definitely agree that my main uh, cause in my case is to expand coaching and to impact as, much, as many people as possible. So, yeah. I think a fundamental shift uh, in, in, the, in the how much to charge question, the trick part, the tricky part to me is it's, it directly impacts your own bank account and your own ideas of security and safety where you're thinking, okay, like, am I safe? Can I focus on the work that I need to focus on? Or am I too concerned about the financial thing that is just drawing my attention away? And it's just hard to focus. Uh, I was there. I mean, I was Moist and I, we lived month to month for two years, like just coaching or bust kind of. And we had a two-year-old and it just, it was wild. I mean, we had like, you know, we had, a, <laughs> we had a patio furniture as our dining room table for a year, you know, kind of stuff. And we, we just lived on, we just was, we just, you know, we were young, idealistic, we were in love and we just, we just made it like just month to month. I hustled and it, there's, a, there's an element of being hungry enough that you have to do the uncomfortable things like giving workshops or presentations or making the phone calls and doing the networking that I think is really valuable. I, and I do feel like networking is the key. Like anywhere you can, like these organizations, you donate time to it, you donate coaching, you, you, you do what you can with the amount of time that you have. Uh, and, and the key, I think, to pricing, the key to looking at, okay, so this is what I need to do for my pricing is asking yourself, if I'm trying to create this kind of change in the world, if, I, if this is the mission that I'm after, what is the dollar amount that I need to be financially sustainable? When you're looking at it from that perspective, you're making money, not for your sake, but you're making money so you can be sustainable to create the change that you want to make. That is the perspective shift. And once you get there, it becomes clear, you know, what, who you need to work with, how you need to work with them and how much to charge because you're doing it for the mission, the sake of the mission. Uh, you'll notice your own stress level goes down, your excitement level goes up. You start taking risks and taking action steps that you wouldn't normally take. That's when you know you're on the right path. 